Welcome back. This is the fifth video on how I built the Catamaran Tokyo Express. The choice of engines for this boat were the traditional diesels or outboards. I ended up deciding on outboards. The boat was primarily a sailing boat. I was trying to keep the boat light and reduce underwater drag to a minimum. Being able to lift the motors up and get the props out of the water to me was a huge advantage. I wasn't planning on long distance motoring so I kept the fuel to a minimum and used the standard Yamaha tanks in well ventilated spaces under the cockpit seats. The motors were 9.9 .9 horsepower 4 stroke Yamahas. With 20 horsepower these motors gave the boat a top speed of 9 knots and on one motor I could motor at 7 knots. An e economical cruise was about half throttle on one motor gave me about 4.5 to 5 knots. In a big sea you'd get some prop cavitation, so they weren't as ideal as a diesel, but that was one of the trade-offs. If there was a big sea running, that usually meant there was wind, and I didn't need the motors anyway. This is going to be his power supply, you're going to bolt that alternator on the top. Right. And that pulley there and work it off there. Mm -hmm. And that'll uh, charge his batteries up. Right. And run a 12 volt system. Uh-huh. I didn't use the pulley. I ended up bolting the alternator directly onto the flywheel of the motor. It was a little unconventional, but this system worked well. It generated that much power that I couldn't use the, the motor to do both, push the boat and generate electricity. It was one or the other. The boat was starting to move along. The steering wheel was in place. It was time to reinstall the beam at the back of the bridge deck floor. I decided to carry my water under the floor in the centre section of both hulls. Epoxy's great, it's inert, it's 100% waterproof. It's not like polyester and vinyl ester resins where it leaves a smell and is semi-porous. When the wood's coated, the surface becomes basically a plastic container. I was getting pretty close now to doing the final paint job. The whole boat had been sprayed with a high build epoxy primer. The bonding and taping of the three sections was actually left to the last moment. All the final fairing was done. The seat lids had been made, the controls and wiring, it's all pre-fitted. The final paint was a white two-pack polyurethane. Two-pack urethane is an awesome paint, hard, long wearing and a super gloss finish, but it's super unhealthy. On a job this big, in an enclosed space for this amount of time, you definitely need a pressure fed hood arrangement. You can't run the risk of breathing this stuff. I had two compressors set up, one feeding the gun, one feeding me. It was a big job. I sprayed the boat in stages, it wasn't possible to do the whole thing in one hit. It's also critical to remove any moisture from the compressed air you're using to paint the boat. I had a homemade arrangement using a toilet roll filter and copper pipe cooling. It was important, especially working in the moist tropical air where I was building the boat. Here's a view of the joint area that had been taped and then fed, and the final painted surface above it. It was a monumental job, the preparation and the painting of the boat. It was such a buzz when the paint had finally dried and you could take off the paper. Here's the boat in its fully painted state. Now it was time to sand the copper epoxy ready for going into the water. You may notice in these photos too that the tinted acrylic windows are also in place. I don't have any other photos of the installation of these windows. The acrylic windows are all bonded in place. The rig on any yacht is a huge capital outlay, so to try and keep the price down I ended up buying the mast and standing rigging as a kit. This saved quite a bit of money and it was a relatively simple job to put it together. The cost for delivery was pretty high. The mast was 15 metres long, so I looked at the rules and regs for what you could transport on the road yourself and figured I could legally pull it home behind my car, so I got my dad's box trailer welded up an extension for it and went down and picked it up myself. But the tollway coming back, they weren't sure what category to put me in to charge me. <laughs> Time out for a cuppa. 
At this stage I was starting to feel excited. It was now a little over two and a half years since I started building the boat. It was time to order the truck and the crane. I still had a big list of things to finish off, but by and large things were ready to go. It was time now to start tearing the shed apart. The next video has quite a bit of real video in it. I hired an old VHS camera for pulling the boat out of the shed. To jump to the next video, just click on the link above. Thanks for watching.